family and friends in our church brought together. Um, Kathy was very special, as we all know. Let me tell you that she was wonderful. She was in this church for many, many years. But uh, we do have a little bouquet back there on the seat where Kathy sat for many, many years. But uh, we're going to have a prayer coming up in a few moments by our elder, Steve Fernandez. But first, I just want to say to you, all the family, we were blessed to have Kathy, and you know that, and we were blessed to have her too. So, uh, I'm not going to say any more, just that uh, we're going to have prayer, and we're going to reflect on the life of Kathy to the family, to the church, and to God. Okay? Steve. We thank you all so much for coming out, and we are just so blessed with the young Kathy over the years. She was a little of the church, very quiet lady, very sweet lady, very graceful lady. And uh, I, when I think back over the years, I'm just amazed. My son was a big, big grown man, was a little kid. And Kathy used to take care of him, uh, do the service. They used to um, they just do, dismiss the junior church. It was a very lovely thing. The kids did a little fidgety during the long service. So they do the songs, they do all the fun stuff, and then go off. And, instruction from the adults and Kathy used to take care of them. Uh, she was very, very active uh, uh, in, in, in all of the things we did, including the game nights, the family nights. Um, I learned how to make um, I had learned how to make this uh, spiced tea from India. It was called chana. And you make it pretty authentically. It's pretty flavored. It's a very interesting thing. And as I'm making it, um, my son is a little bit comes over and says, do um, you think anybody's really interested in that? Because they're like, oh yeah, and he goes, mm, I don't think so. So he goes, yeah, he has his food, but he'll probably try to be not selling. And he's right, he goes, I got to do it, and he's on fire, and he's like, oh, you don't need to do it. And she was always like, oh, I think so. So it was really, you know, that, and she was always very sweet, very gracious. And that's why we were so blessed to have her. That's why uh, I'm so happy to, to be here with friends and family to, to celebrate the life. So, dear Lord, we thank you once again for bringing us all together. We thank you for putting us together in your life and the sweet memory of Kathy Gaza. We thank you for the blessing she was to each and every one of us. And we, we thank you for the grace and the quiet dignity that she always showed. Uh, we thank you for even the small things and the great things. We thank you for the way that each time she offered up prayer on Sunday, she would thank you for the day. Even if the day was gloomy or, or, or dark, she would always find something to praise God about. We thank you for Kathy, we thank you for life, and we thank you for the ability to get together and rejoice in that life. Dear Lord, please lead us, lead us to the service. Let us feel your presence in this uh, assembly today. And may we take that praise and peace home with us. The example of Kathy.
Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know the way, and you know the way. First, I'd like to thank Blue Point Bible Church and Pastor Mike for uh, organizing this celebration of my mother-in-law's life. Um, as it says in the gospel that I just read, oh, you can be seated. You guys can be seated. I'm sorry. As um, as I read in the gospel that um, in heaven they're going to prepare a place for us. And it's going to be something with a, you know, have a glorified body. There's going to be whatever you want. In heaven, it's going to be yours from Jesus. He knows what we want, what we need. And um, he's making a place, or he made a place for Kathy. She's up there now, um, you know, in heaven with God and Jesus. And um, it's just, uh, it's just, it's been a little tough, but... Before she died, I said a prayer um, to her because the last couple of days she wasn't doing so well. And I prayed to Jesus. I said, Jesus, just don't let her suffer no more. And then within a half hour, she was she was gone. And I never really knew what home hospice was until this happened with my mother-in-law. And it was um, pretty tough, but through the grace of God, we got through it. And um, I just remember all the times that we spent with Kathy. She loved food, she loved eating, and um, she had a taste for the finer things in life, whether she could afford it or not. Um, QVC and HSN were one of her favorite things. I still got stuff at the house that's still even in boxes that she never, she never even opened. And, um, but that just, Testifies her character that she was so generous. If you wanted anything, if it was within her power to give it to you, she certainly would. You know, she would sacrifice herself. Um, you know, and stuff like that. But that's enough. This is good. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for doing the service. She loved you so much and thought very highly of you. Growing up, it was just me and my mom raising me as a single parent. She was always a hard worker, and anything I wanted to do, she, she would always find a way for me to do it, from horseback riding lessons, Girl Scouts, high school senior trip for five days. She made it happen somehow, all on her own. When I had Patrick, her first grandchild, she was an amazing grandmother, and they had a very close and special relationship. To say she was an amazing and great grandma is an understatement. My mom loved her family, the Lord, and her friends with all her heart. Some of her friends, some of her friends have been in her life, been friends with her since I was little. Such friendships are very rare, and she had several of those friendships. As much as it hurts me that she passed, I take comfort in knowing she's up there with her family that passed, friends, and all the grand dogs that have passed. I miss my mom so much. Penny, you want to say a couple of words, Penny? My Aunt Kathy was a very strong woman and always someone to look up to growing up. She was a great mom, a hard worker. She always had a zest for life. And if you were lucky enough to be a friend or family member, she loved us all with all she had. 
we spent most holidays together, and it was always good times. Many laughs, and she always said, Grace, before we had our meal together. I miss her putting in her cake orders for the holidays. And she was very specific as to what she wanted ordered. And when I asked my cousin Karen if I ordered that cake from Patsy's Bakery. Being this is an understatement. But we know she is with the Lord and a family that was waiting for her arrival. So that brings us some comfort. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for having a memorial service here. She loved you and your family and this church so much. There's one more thing. We're talking about food and Thanksgiving and stuff. Um, she's going to be remembered for many Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah, she is. As Karen and I are going to dedicate her stuffing recipe that she used to make the best stuffing in the world. And we're going to remember her every Thanksgiving by making that stuffing. Yes. Yeah, and we got, we got the recipe for it. So she's, she's going to be with us. She, she just left her flesh to mine, and now she's in spirit. And her spirit's going to be all over us. So that's it. Kathy was my friend for over 55 years. We met as young women in a complex that had steps and a little, a little balcony where we could sit and chat with our children and other neighbors. We formed a bond then that lasted for a lifetime. Kathy was a wonderful, warm woman. She always had good advice to give you. She was kind and thoughtful. Life has many different paths that we take, some of which we wish we hadn't taken and some of which we're happy that we did. And they were full of lumps and bumps. But with Kathy, she never let anything get her down. She was always optimistic and always ready to share any of the sadness that you had. I will miss her. They say in life that you can count on one hand the number of two friends that you have in a lifetime. And Kathy was my friend. I know that when she meets her maker, she'll bring a smile to his face. When there are so many, they bring a tear to his eye. I will miss her. Thank you. I have a couple of uh, a, a couple of quick and joyful stories about knowing Kathy Dazza. Um, I, I, and as Phil mentioned, she was great at giving gifts and things. I remember, I have a couple of uh, really, really lovely Avon colognes at home. <laughs> I'm not a big cologne wearer, but they're precious to me because they came from that. Uh, also, um, I uh, really, really used to admire that uh, uh, in the last days of her working at Cablevision, and she worked there a long time, uh, in my opinion, they were trying to um, trying to push out the older ones there that were uh, there for a while and making a little bit of money. And she handled them so well. She handled them so graciously. Uh, they kept uh, tapping her and sending her to go take the test again. And Kathy's a very smart lady, and she kept coming back with AIDS. So there's really nothing they can do. And she hung in there a lot longer than most people would. She hung in there and, uh, and got her due. So I was always uh, very proud of her, uh, her, her courageous uh, and uh, um, undying spirit there. I also uh, enjoyed her stories about uh, uh, working at the school. Um, she used to come and tell us about some of the letters that the kids wrote to her. Those letters are very precious to her, and she really, really enjoyed working with the children. And, uh, you know, I think uh, those are two good examples. One of her courage and the other one of her grace and love. And, uh, and uh, I was very thankful to know Kathy over the years, and I just wanted to share those stories with you. God bless you. I want to thank the Lord for having Kathy in my life. 
I met her when I started coming to this church back in 1990. So I knew her for over 34 years. And uh, it's hard to look back to her seat and not see her there anymore. But we used to have gay nights downstairs in the basement once a month. And uh, she and I would gravitate to that Domino's table. <laughs> there was a bigger group of maybe 10 or 12 of us that would play around the table. And uh, she just loved those times. And uh, we also had a gentleman named Ray uh, who went to be with the Lord. I think it was like 2016 when he left us. Does that sound about right? So uh, before he passed, um, he couldn't make it up and down the long steps down to the basement anymore. And so he invited us to her to his house to play dominoes. And Kathy and I went probably once a week at that point. And uh, we were joined by Priscilla and a couple of others from church. And uh, we had great, great times. And Ray was another one just loved his dominoes. And uh, Lord, if there are dominoes in heaven, I know they're having a great time together now. <laughs> and uh, I just thank the Lord for those wonderful, wonderful times. And uh, when she started opening her home to the rest of us, and uh, we would gravitate to her home on a weekly basis. So, uh, and there were times when uh, she and I used to go out to lunch. She uh, introduced me to Branchinelli's on 111. <laughs> and, uh, but she loved lobster, red lobster, cold house, and he yes. went there a few times and just had great times. And uh, I thank the Lord for how she blessed me and uh, everything she did in this church. When I suggested we have some kind of a sunshine committee to send out birthday cards, she goes, I'll do that. Yeah. And uh, we could count on her every, every birthday. She never missed a birthday, an anniversary. Very loving thoughtful and uh, she will be deeply missed by all of us. But we just thank the Lord that we know that she's with him. And uh, uh, so one day we'll be again and I will join them. And I just thank the Lord for her presence in my life. Twelve years ago, I met a very gracious, soft-spoken lady at this church when I walked through the doors, and I came to learn that her name was Kathy, Kathy Dazzo. I thought, with a name like Dazzo, she should be a bit more dazzling. Then I got to know her. We connected over QVC. I noticed her outfits, a new blouse, a new jacket, or a dazzling pair of boots. And then I discovered the dazzle in Kathy Dazzo. She was a fashionista, all right, always dressed very trendy and chic. And she would love that I called her chic if she were here right now. But we didn't just talk about clothes. We talked about David and his happy dance, and Jimmy the Baker, regulars on QVC. In fact, I wanted to bring some Jimmy the Baker cinnamon rolls today, but they were all sold out. <laughs> Kathy not only had a keen eye for fashion, but a keen palate as well for food. If you've, ever, if you've never tasted Jimmy the Baker sweet rolls, you're missing out. They were her favorites. But aside from the outward appearance and the talk of delicious food, as well as her dedication for working at the voting booths on election day, and all of the children that adored her when she was a teacher's aide. Kathy had a spirit of love, joy, and peace that was infectious. She never seemed to worry about anything. Concerned, maybe, but never worry. In some of her hardest challenges with her health, she would say, well, God knows all about it. I just give it to him. And health challenges she had, a lot of them. What a testimony she was, going through all the medical issues she had. She endured peacefully, knowing God's presence would sustain her. And God did sustain her. She would make it to church, no matter how hard it was for her, and be the first one to raise her voice during praise and prayer. She would praise God for the weather, like Steve mentioned, no matter what it was, 
thanking him for sunshine and thanking him for rain. Then on to prayer, she would always pray for her dear family, mentioning their names one by one, Karen, Phil, Patrick, etc., and many others. Yes, Kathy was a ray of sunshine, and we all miss her terribly. But we can hear her sweet voice praising her God in our minds and our memory. We can recall it whenever we want. I am happy to be here today to honor this wonderful woman, Kathy Dazzo, who made an indelible mark on my heart. I had only known Kathy for like 10 years because I'm like one of the newest members of the Blue Point Bible Church. But she made a very great impact on my life due to the fact that, you know, she, she's like, like, they, like people have mentioned all the, often that she's always been optimistic. You know, she's always been here in church every, every opportunity. And uh, she was our sunshine committee. She made people feel special and things of this nature by remembering birthdays, anniversaries, and things of this nature. Uh, she's been part of my journey when I lived in uh, the Southern Metal Apartments here, and then moving to Medford, and then now I'm living in Oakdale. She, she, she was part of my journey, and she was the one that let me know of the benefits or what was offered at the adult facility or uh, apartment complex in which I live. She told me what they had to offer, which I had no clue on. It's kind of like, you know, with Jesus, you know, we have many gifts from Jesus that, you know, we don't know we have. You know, as we walk on in life, we, we, we learn these things. And finding and seeing in her last, you know, moments, you know, that she had the joy of the Lord in her heart, you know, which is wonderful because happiness, you know, that uh, depends on circumstances. But joy, joy is, doesn't, uh, circumstances doesn't make you joyful. What makes you joyful is your knowledge of what you have in Christ Jesus, and she knew what she had. And I just thank and praise God for her uh, being that uh, example in life and just being that wonderful person and giving me the opportunity to meet people like Phil. Uh, I love the Lord so much. And my first uh, opportunity to meet Karen, you know, uh, officially, uh, I think, it's, you know, it's just a blessing. And, uh, I just pray that they continue in the Lord strongly, which I know that they, they always will, <laughs> because Phil is one that loves the Lord, and that they just continue to see, search, study, and prove all things. In Jesus' name, thank you. Hello again. What everybody said is so true about Kathy, the way hello for the family and his church. Uh, Kathy, as has been stated, would go and whether it's anniversaries, birthdays, whatever it was, had cards ready for everybody in our congregation. Mm -hmm. She made you feel special in the best way that she could. I remember quite a few times coming into our church service, just before the church service, Kathy would come out of the car, sometimes needed a little assistance, and uh, then I'd walk with her. I'd put my arm around her, I helped her during, just to walk along, this is obviously rather recently, say a year or so. And I'd talk, say, how are you feeling? And she'd tell me her ailments. And I'd just talk to her, somewhat in a serious manner. But then we'd go and laugh and enjoy each other's company after. And I want to say, she prayed about you folks all the time. I mean, pray unceasingly, she thought about you folks unceasingly. And just one other thing, um, it was, we, Sandy and I, my wife there, who had spoken before, right, had our 25th wedding anniversary, and we had the, the uh, RSVPs out and what have us. Kathy, in the spot where the flowers are, went up and said, I sent mine in the mail right away. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it. What we, what we did, though, was have a chair for Kathy at our 25th. So she was there, like once again, the flowers in the back, which you folks please take, uh, bring it home. But uh, Kathy was special, and she did what she can in her way to make people feel good. 
and I'm thankful for her as we all should be. First, I'd like to thank everyone here. Thank you for taking the time, seeing this important to be here, celebrating Kathy, and that's what we're doing. We're celebrating Kathy, that her life, and we're celebrating that she's still alive. Here in this place, we believe Kathy continues her eternal life forever, and we get to celebrate that. This is not a time of mourning or of anything, although we do miss her here in this earthly life. I have a short message. I don't intend to share too much with you, but I have some thoughts I'd like to share. The first time I went out with Kathy, back in 2014, we went to the American Cheese in Sayville. That was the inspiration behind what we had in our fellowship room. The wine, cheese, grapes, crackers, uh, all that we celebrated before this service, and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Also, part of the inspiration was that every holiday, from New Year's to Christmas, Kathy would gift me with a bottle of wine. When I began my pastor here, I asked every person to write down their favorite foods. We call it food and fellowship around here at the Blue Point Bible Church. Kathy wrote lobster. I hope everyone enjoyed the lobster dip rolls. Kathy would have. She would remind me every time when we had our fellowship luncheons how much she enjoyed the food. She enjoyed my cooking, thanks be to God. And she was always very gracious with her comments. And I do have to say thank you to my wife for also helping out and making this very possible. And of course, thank you to Phil and Karen for making this possible, for each of you to have this time to celebrate, to memorialize Kathy, and remember all that she represents and continues to represent to this day. She always enjoyed the meals that we would cook around the church. Thanks to Deacon Brian and his wife Sandy, we had sweets earlier today too. If you didn't have any, don't worry. There's still food to enjoy after our time of memorializing Kathy here. It was always Sandy or Brian, Sandy and Brian or Kathy that would bring the sweets to our fellowship luncheons. On a typical Sunday here at the Blue Point Bible Church, we had a time of corporate praise and prayer. Kathy would always be the person, no matter the situation and circumstance, no matter the weather, sun or rain, she would remind us, it's a beautiful day today. Can I remind all of us, it's a beautiful day today. Kathy appreciated every day of her earthly life, and I know she's appreciating her heavenly life. Though I know for sure, she misses us, and we miss her. Kathy loved people and loved people well. We designated her not just part of the Sunshine Committee here at this church, she was the Sunshine Committee at this church. She came up with the name, her and Meredith at our meeting, an idea to bring sunshine into people's day, giving a card on your birthday or your anniversary, asking me to deliver a small gift or flowers to someone who couldn't make it to church. Again, whatever could be done to bless someone. Kathy supported the idea. She appreciated receiving gifts and pleasantries as well, often reminding me of the Mother's Day flowers I delivered to her years ago, and she would tell me how they were growing. Oh, how I wish she could tell me today. At the end of every worship service, Kathy would wait, no matter how long, to speak to me and simply tell me about maybe a movie she saw, a movie she was going to see with her friends, and I know we've talked a lot about how she loved her family, and she did. She also loved her friends. She would talk about her friends all the time. She would talk about the kids that she loved, who wrote to her, and her work at Federation. Kathy's mind and heart to help others will always encourage me. I'll forever remember visiting and talking with Kathy in her last earthly days. And I told her that she was so loved and missed by many here at the Blue Point Bible Church. She responded by asking me, why? And I was so shocked. I then had the privilege to begin to account to her just a few of the reasons that she was so loved and is so loved. Kathy knew the privilege and responsibility we have to appreciate and bless the people around us. I'm glad to be, have been able to have such a moment to express that appreciation and how much of a blessing fellowship with her was to me. Again, I mentioned I don't intend to be long-winded this morning. I know it's warm. We didn't want to have the fans blowing everybody all around the room and all the beautiful bows that Phil helped put on the uh, pews. However, I do have a lasting encouragement that I would like to share with each of you. A collection of Bible verses and characteristics that Kathy would have defined, would have said define the Christian life. 
a quick story first. A few years ago, I asked everyone in our congregation to try and boil down the Christian faith to the best of their ability by just providing a few Bible verses and a few characteristics that stand out. This is what Kathy shared. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 6. A scoffer seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge is easy for the one who has understanding. In John chapter 15, verses 12 through 15, we read the words of Jesus Christ, in that he said, This is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, the one that lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. In the book of Romans we read, Be devoted, Romans 12.10 to be exact, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love, giving preference to one another in honor. And lastly, Colossians 3, verses 12 through 14. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. In addition to these things, put on love which is the perfect bond of unity. The characteristics that she mentioned are detailed in those verses I just shared with you. Love, wisdom, giving, caring, peaceful, and forgiving. I believe everything that's been shared in this room so far has demonstrated that Kathy lived those attributes, those characteristics very well. She would encourage each of us to be doing to the best of our ability as well. Amen? Amen? Might we all, especially those who identify and profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, endeavor to live with love, wisdom, a spirit of giving, caring, being peaceful, and forgiving others. I'd like to conclude my sharing this morning by thanking God for allowing me the privilege to know and pastor our sister Kathy. She was a mighty sister in Christ and will forever be, as I hope is evidenced in the details that we have shared thus far. Here at the Blue Point Bible Church, we don't spend a whole lot of time thinking or talking about the afterlife, because we know that there's so much prior life to be lived, loving our families, living in fellowship with other believers, being the best witnesses of the things of God that we can be, and appreciating each earthly day that God blesses us with. However, there are texts, plenty of texts, that speak to the truth of an afterlife. And I know Sister Kathy is enjoying it. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, we read, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors. <laughs>